I wanted to start this video by asking for prayer. Please keep me in your prayers. I'm really needing the prayers right now. I just wanted to quickly discuss this article in Israel 365 News titled, Will Flights from Israel to Mecca Spark Temple Mount Controversy Between Palestinians and Saudi Arabia? And this is by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz, May 23rd, 2023. And he writes, Prime Minister Netanyahu was in direct contact with Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, concerning direct flights from Ben Gurion International Airport to Jeddah, airport for Israeli Muslims to make the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca. Israeli media reported this on Tuesday. Netanyahu and Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen spoke with MBS and Saudi Foreign Minister Abdulatif Al Ziani on Monday. Cohen announced earlier this month that Israel had formally requested direct flights from the Saudi government. Currently, Muslim pilgrims from Israel must travel through third countries such as Jordan, incurring increased expenses. In 2018, Saudi Arabia began allowing flights from non-Israeli carriers to pass over their airspace on flights to and from Israel. This was expanded to include Israeli carriers in 2022. In an interview with Channel 12's Meet the Press on Saturday, Cohen stated that Israel and Saudi Arabia may normalize relations within six months. The direct flights may begin as soon as June, as Muslim pilgrims are already starting to arrive in Mecca after two years of the pandemic restrictions limiting the Hajj. Hajj is an annual pilgrimage to Mecca, the holiest city for Sunnis, and as one of the five pillars of Islam. It is a mandatory religious duty that must be carried out at least once in their lifetime by all adult Muslims. Since Islam operates according to a solar calendar, the date changes yearly. This year the Hajj period extends from June 16th to July 1st. Hajj is similar to the Hebrew word Hag, referring to the three biblical feasts in which Jews were required to make a pilgrimage to the temple in Jerusalem. I thought that was interesting. They're trying to compare that. According to the official published statistics between 2000 and 2019, the average number of attendees is 2,269,145 per year, of which 1,564,710 come from outside Saudi Arabia, and 671,983 are local. Mariv reported that 2,700 Israelis made the pilgrimage in 2022. This number is expected to almost double to 4,500 for the 2023 Hajj. Hajj is associated with Jerusalem and the conflict over the Temple Mount. Many people mistakenly claim that the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount is the third holiest site for Muslims, but this is inaccurate. Dr. Mordecai Kadar, a senior lecturer in the Department of Arabic at Bar Ilan University, explained that while some Sunnis consider Jerusalem the third holiest city, this is not true for Saudis. Saudi scholars and journalists have recently been disputing this claim publicly. Qadar said, Palestinians make Hajj to Mecca while claiming that Jerusalem as the fake replacement for Mecca is holy. Qadar refers to the myth that the Aqsa Mosque described in the Quran is located in Jerusalem. I thought this was very interesting. Fifty years after the death of Muhammad in 682 AD, Abd Allah ibn al-Zubayr revolted against the Umayyad dynasty that ruled in Damascus, Kedar explained. 
He closed the roads and prevented Damascus residents from making the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca. Having no other choice, the Umayyads chose Jerusalem as an alternative Hajj destination. To entrench their choice of Jerusalem, they invented the story that the Al-Aqsa Mosque mentioned in the Quran wasn't in Jurana, but in Jerusalem. They linked the story to the Quran myth about Muhammad's night flight at Al-Aqsa Mosque by inventing a number of hadiths that are essentially rewritten history. Today this narrative describing Muhammad's night journey is culminating in Jerusalem has been revived, advanced by the Muslim Brotherhood, Turkey's President Erdogan, Qatar, and other Islamic movements seeking to unite Muslims and or Arabs under a caliphate who seek to take over Jerusalem and use it like a crown, Qadar told Israel 365 News. Now what if this king that's coming there that Israel will appoint as their king is uh, the big supporter of Islam as we know and what if he's fully embracing that in the future and this pleases them to no end and they use his crown as a crown for their caliphate. Qadar explained that Al-Aqsa is mentioned once in the Quran and Jerusalem is never named. He cited the notable exceptions of Islamic interest in Jerusalem were the periods in which the Muslims identified a risk that other religions would rule in Jerusalem, such as during the Crusades, the First World War, and of course the period of Zionism. Shia Islam mercilessly persecuted by the Umayyad Caliphate did not accept the Holy Jerusalem canard, which is the reason the second holiest city to Shiites is the Najif in Iraq. Burial place of Shiite founder Ali ben Abi Talib. Many Shiite elders, Iranian and Hezbollah, only began to call Jerusalem holy after the Khomeini rebellion in 1979 to keep the Sunnis from accusing them of being soft on Zionism. The Temple Mount is already a source of conflict between Palestinians and Arabs visiting from other Gulf states. The Palestinian interest in the Temple Mount is political and not religious, Qadar told Israel 365 News, so they treat it politically. We have already seen that dignitaries who visit from the UAE are spat upon and cursed at by the Palestinians at the site. They treat them worse than they treat the Jews because Jews are just the enemy. The UAE and Bahrain are traitors to them. When Saudi Arabians begin to come and argue that Al-Aqsa is in Saudi Arabia, the Palestinians will see it is even worse. For the time being, Saudi Arabia is not openly disputing the Al-Aqsa-Jerusalem connection because they don't want to anger Iran, he said. If Saudi Arabia normalizes relations with Israel, it would conform to the prophecy of a pre-Messiah reconciliation between Isaac and Ishmael based on the verse in Genesis in which Ishmael and Isaac come together at Abraham's funeral. And Yitzhak and Ishmael, his sons, buried him in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar the Hittite, which is before Mamre, which is Genesis 25, 9. Rabbi Shlomo Yitzhaki, the preeminent medieval French commentator on the Torah, known by the acronym Rashi, interprets this verse to mean that Ishmael made peace with Isaac, allowing his younger half-brother to precede him at the funeral. The Talmud, in which they believe, in Baba Batra 16b predicts this will have implications for the end of days. The Talmud relates that Ishmael and 
Yitzhak will have a tenuous relationship. Still, at the end of days, they will come together as the, his sons. Saudi Arabians consider themselves to be the sons of Ishmael, and the prophecy can very well be speaking about them. So if you've got King Charles III bringing all the faiths together, of which he's the defender of all, and we know that he you know, is the patron of the Islamic Center in London and, you know, dressed in the Islamic garb and it's said that he converted to Islam, although he disputed that. Um, we know that he's embracing all these religions and so if he goes there to Jerusalem and they're all accepting of him as the anointed king, as I've said a million times, um, then it seems to me that this statement would definitely come to pass that said, and I'll repeat this paragraph, it said, Today this narrative describing Muhammad's night journey as culminating in Jerusalem has been revived, advanced by the Muslim Brotherhood, Turkey's President Erdogan, Qatar, and other Islamic movements seeking to unite Muslims and or Arabs under a caliphate who seek to take over Jerusalem and use it like a crown. So, a certain person that will be called the Mahdi, a certain king, will take this role. And I believe that he will be uniting all of these people there in Jerusalem under all of these faiths and bring the Muslims together and all of it will be under this king's crown. So, just wanted to share this news because I thought it was a profound article and of course we look at prophecy in the news and try to just show things that are being revealed for the last days and this is one of them. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe and share and please don't forget to support my channel. It's very critical for me in my situation. Um, if you'd like to read about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and an incredible story that the Holy Spirit revealed, it's all written out in this incredible book that the Lord put on my heart um, through the Holy Spirit, Divine Revelations for the last days revealing King Yeshua Jesus as the Messiah of Israel and that the Davidic dynasty returns. Your support um, can go to paypal.me slash kkrococo or Kimberly K. Ballard B-A-L-L-A-R-D P.O. Box 246 Niwot N-I-W-O-T Colorado 80544 and if you want to read the almond tree, Aaron's rod, the Messiah, King of Israel, it's a very large body of work. And it was uh, acquired at Harvard University Library through a Judaica endowment, of all things. And that was put there by the Lord. So it's olivepresspublisher.com. And just look for the banner that says the almond tree. And you can read all about, you know, what I talk about in the book. And you can see the interview that I did. Um, somebody set it up for me to do an interview on Paul Begley's um, Apocalypse TV show. A, a interview by phone, I mean. So I've never met him or his wife or anything, but I did an interview to tell about the miraculous story in my book. And um, anyway, I just pray that you have a good rest of the evening, and I will talk to you in the next video. Pray for me. Keep me in your prayers. Thank you. God bless.